Today's video is all about should you buy a digital tire inflation gauge or should you buy an analog tire inflation gauge. Right there is my tire inflation gauge and as you can see over here is my garage door. It's the middle of the winter. You can hear my heater is on. This is very important. This right here and the position of that. So let's talk about that right now. First thing is, welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Okay, so here's the tire pressure inflator gauge. And it's a analog, I guess just a needle sweep gauge. And this one here I'm gonna show you, it's become defective over time. And this is the kind of unit that I prefer. Now I have tried the digital gauges in the past. So they're identical to this, except this is a digital reading that you get from here and on the back side you'd have a slot to put in a couple of batteries total fail total fail on my point um, if you are actually taking this bring it in your house putting it underneath your pillow every night to go to bed with well then digital is for you but for me you see where it was next to my garage door that's where it stays all the time next to my air hoses next to the spot where you're going to use it, right? So, what happens? Well, after about a year and a half, the batteries went dead. I went to pull the back out, and it was like a giant fungus inside there. The terminals just rotted right off. There was so much corrosion in there that, you know what, I just chucked it right in the garbage. Now, if you live in a climate, you're down in Arizona or somewhere, where it's nice and warm all the time, digital's probably great. But for up here in the north, I'm in the garage. I leave the garage, the heat level drops, condensation level goes up. Guess what? Digital, total fail. I would not recommend anybody buy any digital equipment if you're gonna leave it out in your shop in high moisture areas, you know, all year round. So I have to go with this style here. Now I did buy a new one and it's much better than this one. I'm gonna show you how this one here went bad on me. And uh, I'm going to show you the new one, and uh, it is just fantastic. It is exactly what I'm looking for. And remember, tire pressure gauges are much along the same lines as torque wrenches. I've looked at so many of these online, and most of them, what are they? Up to like 150, 250 PSI. Like, I mean, what kind of compressor you got that can put out 250 PSI? And for most homeowners, guess what? You're putting air in your tires between 30 PSI and I would say maybe uh, 80 PSI. I put 80 PSI in my Silverado when I'm carrying a big load. Besides that, who needs a gauge that goes that high? This one here, it is like nuts. 250 PSI. So you can see how the res resolution, you just go a little bit bang, you're at 80 PSI. So I mean, this gauge I'm gonna show you here, I think it's fantastic, it's gonna work out well for me. And the main thing that I found with a lot of these gauges, whether it's digital or not, is this end right here. A lot of times you clip this on, you put it on your tire valve, and it's leaking. And you gotta move it around till the stop's leaking. Well, you know what? The ones I'm gonna show you here now, all brass, really nice, it's not cheesy at all. This one did the job for many years, but I'm gonna show you how this one failed, and I'm gonna show you the new one right now. It might be hard for you to see this, but if you can just take a look at the difference between here and up here, you can see that this lamination here is all risen up. So now when I try to put air in, if I get close to the 80 PSI, well, the needle hits the background. And that's what happened to this gauge here is the lamination actually separated, and it came up, and in warmer temperatures, we get down to about 60 PSI, and uh, yeah, the needle will swing and get stuck. So that's what happened with this one. Well, there's the new one I got. I'm gonna take it out of the box, I'm gonna put it all together, and I'm gonna show you how much better the design on this is, and how the resolution makes a huge difference. And surprisingly, on this one, the dial itself glows green at nighttime when it's dark. 
I don't know how many people would actually need to use that, but I thought that was an interesting feature as well. Now this one here has a resolution to be plus or minus one PSI between zero and a hundred PSI. Well there's the unit itself right there and the first thing you could notice, brass. It's got a lot of brass on it and if you take a look at the end here, this is not no cheesy type of uh, tire valve stem holder. I mean this is real nice and uh, if you take a look at the resolution there, yeah, we're talking 0 to 100 PSI. So, you know, it's so much easier to see. The graduations are exactly what I want. I don't want all them other graduations. Take a look at this one here. I mean, look at the, the different graduations. I mean, they've got everything in a scale that I don't understand. The only thing I understand is PSI. The rest of this stuff is just garbage as far as I'm concerned. I don't understand it and I've never seen anything except I guess kilopascals which I never use but I only use PSI. This is what I wanted. PSI, plain and simple, does the job. Well, it comes with the uh, fitting already installed on the end. It comes with some Teflon tape. I don't know why, the fitting's already on the end. And it comes with this little gadget here. And, uh, you know, this comes in handy too. And it comes with four valve stem caps. So I thought that was okay. So let's try it out on something here, just to see how good this holds on to a tire valve stem and whether it leaks. Okay, I'm going to show you my old one first. It works fine, but you know what? This is the problem. Can you hear that leaking? Yeah, if you just don't... If you just don't get it right... So you can still put air in it, but if you just don't get it right, you know, it, it'll leak. And, and these little ends on it, well, they're not the best. So what I've been doing lately is, well, I have to double check it with a tire pressure, a manual tire pressure gauge and not use this gauge. So let's try this one and let's see how good it seals up. Because for the most part, I think this is a lot better idea. It looks a lot better. Let's try it out. Look at that. Oh, she's leaking a bit there. Let me just see here. There. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's a lot better. And of course, you just press this to reduce your air pressure. That's a lot better. And you know, really, that's all you really need right there. So in the end, I just wanted something that works. This here, you know what? This works like a charm. I like it. I like the really nice beefy brass end on it. Doesn't leak. I mean, you might have to fiddle around with it like usual, like every other one that you can get out there. But it seems like on this particular brand, every one of their, their air pressure inflators have the exact same end. Whether you're paying less than $30 like I did, or paying 200 bucks, they got the same one on the end. So thanks for joining me here today, and I just thought I'd bring up this subject about should you get a digital one? And for me, nah, it doesn't work for me. And you know, I've proved it to myself by just chucking out $75 in the garbage because <laughs> it just corroded the pieces, right? So thanks for joining me here today. If you haven't seen this channel before, well, you're welcome to subscribe and see some future unique reviews. Cheers.